welcome to Jazz After Dark. How y'all doing today? Hope you guys got something interesting to drink. Oh, these are light. And you're ready to hang out with us here a little bit. I'm going to pick on you tonight. I'm going to pick on you. You know, I have the joy. Grab a drink. Hang out with us for a minute. Don't worry. Daddy's going to be just nice to you, but we, we're disappointed. Um, I'm going to hang out with you guys for a second. Actually, we're missing something here. Grab a drink. Uh, we're actually using the Flaviar thing here today. If you're interested, it's where they send you those little vials. They give you a discount code if you put one of our codes in there. Someone will show it up there for you. But I'm excited about this one because this is a Japanese uh, Japanese whiskey uh, mix. Oh, there it is. And we've got three here to start with. And so we'll just, you know, we'll just get into it here. We'll start with A, Japanese whiskey uh product of japan let me just see real quick if i can tell which one this is it doesn't tell me uh on this one this is the sonin uh i don't know actually i think this is not correct uh okay let's start with this one let's start with b until i can figure out what's going on all right when's the best time to invest in gold hmm that's what we're going to talk about i'm going to share that data here with you today with my drink of choice, it is Shinobu. It's a blended Japanese whiskey, apparently. The Shinobu, we're supposed to get lots of apple, lemon, nutty, peaty. Oh, darn it. I, You know, when they say apple and I'm like, if they didn't say apple, would I get it? Would I be smart enough to? I think I would. I think I'd get this one, man. Slightly sweet, black pepper, lemon, apple, and nutty. That's apple all day. Very, very light, a little watery kind of a thing. I'm uh, that's not that's not amazing to me. Uh, that'd be good mixed with something with somebody that doesn't like the taste of any kind of whiskey. Uh, so that one ranks pretty much dead last for me uh, that I've ever had. I'd give that one like a you know maybe a C, whatever a C is these days for kids. But that is the Shino Shinobu. Still cool to try. All right. I have the privilege, the honor of talking to literally thousands of people all over the country, uh, seeing emails, comments, phone calls, clients, you name it. And um, why? What's the deal? Everybody, there must be advertising going on. Everybody's like, I think I need to get into gold, man. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on gold? A gold IRA, buying gold in a cash account. What should I do? And you're too late. I'm not against gold. Uh, you know, I just think you're too late. You're wasting your money and you're falling for emotion in this case. And it's evident now. People that ask me if I should be buying gold, it is clear as day that you are behaving based on emotion. Uh, the market's going up. I don't understand. <laughs> the market's going up, but yet people are more concerned than last year when the market was going down over 20%, I might add. The gold trade is tricky. And this comes from a data perspective. So this is not my opinion. If you want to panic and, and be emotional and go buy gold, uh, you know, we all do things like that. So I'm not going to pick on you too much, but let's take a look at how this works. Gold tends to uh, behave where it's totally opposite of the market. So gold will do nothing and be real sleepy for a while and then pop and then go back to being asleep and do nothing for a while. I'm talking years go nothing and then bam, takes off. And you're like, ah, that got to get in gold. Whereas the stock market uh, has a drift higher. So if nothing happens, the stock market naturally drifts higher. So it just goes about its way, drifting, drifting for years after years. And then bam, we've got a problem. And then drifting, 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 drifting. And then bam, we've got a problem. That's the market. And that's why it's difficult sometimes to invest in the market because Everything is fine for so long, you get comfortable with that. And when there's a problem, you think that that's the biggest problem that we will never be able to solve. Whereas gold is quiet, doesn't tend to just fall out of bed. It's real quiet and then sets a new price, takes a break, gets quiet, sets a new price and gets quiet. So uh, case in point here, let's take a look. We're usually looking at inflation. Most people say, I worry about inflation. I need to buy gold. And sort of in gold is the color in the background there. I've shared this with clients in the past. Uh, this is the gold price in US dollars, to keep it simple. And the black line is inflation. Gold goes higher before inflation rises. By the time inflation rises, gold is usually peaking out or very, very close to it. Here's an example. 
1986, gold was already moving higher before that inflation fear set in. Once it did and inflation started rising, too much money in the uh, uh, economy, gold was darn near at its peak. If you bought into it after inflation rose, you had to suffer losses. Not one person there enjoyed a profit. We then have inflation pulling back and gold does what it normally does in low inflation environments. It slows down. Here's another example. Gold is trending lower and has, in fact, at this point, you would say on this chart, you say it currently has negative returns. Inflation starts going higher. Gold peaks as or before inflation does, right? So it's already peaking and you find inflation going up. Imagine all of these months and months and months just going by and you're like, I got to get in gold. I got in gold. All of a sudden, in some kind of news hits or something, uh, the advertising or whatever it gets you to do it, you're already in trouble. Then what happens? Inflation peaks and starts pulling back. Well, gold's not going higher then, right? So that's 97 through 2000. So this is honestly a meaningful, lengthy time where people would have questioned getting in gold. And I actually buy this one. Like if you think you would have gotten in early during the start of the inflation, all right, you had plenty of time. Don't let this seem like it's just a couple days. That's months and months, right? 2009 through 2012, when I did this class for clients, I actually looked for a correlation. I wanted to have initially the answer to say, here's when you get into gold. So there was a brief moment where inflation was ticking higher and gold was already trending higher. However, gold peaks and inflation peaks, right? You're late to the game. If you waited for inflation to start spiking, we could argue back over here a little bit, actually. You might have found a little bit of a decent entry, but it peaks and that's it. There's no magic rally from here, right? If I go back, once this peaks, there's no magic rally. It will sleep for a while, then wake back up and everything gets going. Here's what we have uh, currently. Or no, this was the last one here. So going through uh, 2018, coming into 19 and 20. We have gold rising, gold rising, gold rising. Why? It's just enjoying a nice rally. It's one of those times where it wakes up and goes, oh my God, we're worried about inflation. Now inflation starts rising. You missed the trade. See what's happening? You have to be early to gold. If we look at right now, what's happening? Inflation's already peaked. It is clearly pulling back, but gold is taken off again. For what? How does gold represent something to hedge against inflation at this point? It doesn't. Inflation's going down. So gold purely at this moment has a fear value, a fear value based on you people saying, I'm going to go buy gold and put it in my portfolio. Number one, gold has these fits and starts. It's already had its start. It's gone. It's taken off. If you buy now, you're paying well above the average price of gold. You're paying for an overbought asset. Really difficult to do in there, especially since is inflation going to go higher? Is it going to get out of control? That's your belief at this point is if you buy gold, you're saying, I believe that the Fed will lose uh, total control and we will have this hyperinflation type environment. You're going to look like you're right. Let me just start here. If you're one of our clients, you can go back to where uh, notes from jazz just a couple weeks ago. It's an email that I do every week. I actually showed that the formula how they calculate inflation, it's actually going to go up again before it goes down. So we explained, uh, so you know, uh, inflation, they give you the month over month number, and then of course the year over year number. That's the headline number. So if inflation goes up month over month at 0.2%, 0.3%, or 0.4%, we will continue to drift lower. But that formula, you actually have a recipe for inflation as a headline number to start going back up before it goes down. Now, the market knows this. I'm not special. This is not a conspiracy theory. The market knows this. The Fed knows this. They've even said it specifically. Inflation will go up before it goes back down. They're 100% right. I don't know who created the formula for this or how they decided that this was what they were going to do. But if you have month over month growth, which we do, of 0.2 to 0.3% in uh, inflation, you will have rising headline inflation numbers. We're just working off that older data from going back to a year ago. So inflation naturally will be higher because the year over year, we have a number that's going down. These higher numbers drop off the uh, 
the calculation that the, the, there's no more 12 months. Those are now 13, 14, 15 months. They go away. Take that year over year data and now you go, oh, we're skewed to the upside. So that's going to make you think, and maybe what people are thinking here, if they're already ahead of the game, inflation's going to go up. And for a brief moment, everybody's going to think that's it. Inflation's bottomed. I already, I, we even calculated where it was. Is it going to be around 4%? Will we see a three here? Yep. And then it'll start going higher again. Not because the Fed has lost control, but because of how we calculate it. There's only 12 months in the year over year number. So think about that. Anyways, buying gold at this point is a fool's gamble. It really is. It, and I'm not saying gold's a bad thing. I'm just saying you've missed the boat on this run. Doom and gloomers, people that worry, you know, go ahead and you, know, you just hold tight. And maybe you'll get another chance. But for the moment, uh, I've had a few clients and mostly just people that ask questions that are not clients. And, and I'm like, you're not going to take my word for it. You know why? Because you're already emotional. I can't communicate with someone that's already emotional. And I do that to clients all the time. When the market's going up, I'm doom and gloom guy. I'm the guy going, when the market falls, because it's going to fall, here's what we're going to do. If I do that while the market's going up, I have your attention. If I do it when the market's falling and, and you know, politics are on TV and, and the Fed's on TV, you're not listening to me. You've now said, I trusted you, but now I've got to look after myself. I got to do this. That's too late. You're going to do something silly there. So I pick on you a little bit for that because I've seen it. I watch people. I feel like I've become better with, you know, personally with my own finances, just watching people do stuff emotionally. And some of it I get, you know, death in the family, things like that. Of course, there's a brief moment. We had a client win the lottery. Actually, it was a state lottery. They won the lottery and you'd have thought I was talking to somebody different. They lost their mind for a second. And I'm like, look, my job is to stop you from doing stupid stuff and you're being stupid. Like I had to pick on them for a minute. I'm like, I don't know how else to tell you this, but if I don't at least try to tell you that you've lost your mind, I will have done you a disservice. Thankfully, they've come around. We, we met in the middle. It was a nice uh, way to allow them to enjoy some of the money, but not be too super silly about it. Nonetheless, quippy and emotional. Use the data. If you like using the data, come to our Closing Beat show every day. Uh, five o'clock live, we go over the stock market from a data perspective. How do things behave? What do the numbers mean when you see something on TV? Instead of giving you my opinion, I just give you the data. This is how it works. This is how things go. Everything from how Robinhood makes money, specifically through order flow, uh, all the way through what the Fed means when they say this or that, uh, specifics. Okay, our job is to help you there. All right, I'm going to go uh, mix this with something because it's not the best, but it was the Shinobu blended Japanese whiskey. It is basically a watered down apple, kind of a peaty apple watery thing there. 43% um, alcohol by volume. So I don't, I don't know what else I was expecting there. Some win, some hit, some don't. All right, enjoy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.